Well, hi there, and welcome to this tutorial for Fastlane Digital Audio School down in Montpellier. I'm Freddy Frogs, certified Ableton trainer. Today, we'll explore one of the long awaited functions that's just been introduced in Life 10 the split stereo mode. So, why do we use that and how do we use it? Let's explain it straight away. Before I can explain how to use this new split stereo pan parts, I need to explain why we need such a tool in Ableton Live to deal with our stereo signals. So to demonstrate that, on the left hand side here, I've got a sine wave that has a drum-like shape, very short sound. Next to it, I've got a sawtooth that has a sustained sound. Good. So I'm going to merge both these signals into a brand new track to create a proper stereo signal. Let's call this track the bass. There it is. I'm using the I.O. sections of live. I'm going to send these signals into this track. I enable it to receive these signals and let's listen to that. So now I'm going to hard pan the sawtooth to the right and the sine wave to the left. And there, you can hear a proper stereo signal here with two separate signals on the left and the right. Now, if I use a classic stereo pan put we find here to um, move these signals to the left or the right hand side of my mix, listen to what happens. I progressively move to the left and the sawtooth disappears. Same on the other side, as I move to the right, the sine wave slowly disappears completely when I'm a hard pan is completely gone. So you understand now that this is not great because I'm losing half of my signal. As I move to the right, it lowers the left hand side channel and it raises slightly the volume of the right hand side channel and vice versa. So my stereo signal is not properly compiled because I'm losing half of that. So I'm losing actually this, the, the whole movement and the whole uh, stereo effect there. So this is when we need that split stereo pan. So select split stereo pan mode. You get it with the right hand side on the classic stereo pans, you see, and you can select the split stereo pan. So I can now move independently the left or the right hand side and feed it on the other side. This is what I'm going to do. Look, I'm going to move slowly the right hand side to the left hand side and the sawtooth doesn't disappear and instead it's shifting to the left until both the sawtooth and the sine waves are merged together to the left hand side of my channel and that's a proper stereo split pan. So you now understand how important this tool is and what's the difference between a classic stereo pan and a split stereo pan. Now let me uh, demonstrate once more with a, a more musical uh, example. Uh, so I'm, I've got here a signal I've created and this signal has a very important left to right movement. I did that with the auto pan as you can see here. Okay, so as I use the classic stereo pan, look at what happens. Yeah, indeed, the dis signal disappears again and that's definitely not the musical effect I was after. Something on the other side, obviously. Yeah, so however, if I right click and use the split stereo pan mode, I can now keep that left to right movement but look I can now shift the movement and if you're wearing headphones to listen to this you'll notice that when I get to zero here the movement is now from the center to the left the movement still exists I'm not losing that movement I can move it to the other side if I wanted to and now we have a movement from the center to the right hand side you see so I can really decide uh, almost if I if it, let's say if I place it that way about 16 left and 16 right you see I can now reduce the, the uh, movement so it says if, you, if you're looking at a clock it moves from say 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock and that's where the, the movement happens oh I actually didn't do it properly I wanted to go to the left here there you go now you can hear you see the movement moves from say 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock yeah, so I can actually narrow that panning uh, if I wanted to, to really place it in my mix. Now, this is highly important again, but in the studio, for instance, we'd record a, a piano, we'd record it stereo, wouldn't we? We'd have uh, two mics, one picking up slightly more of the left hand side keys. The other one's picking up more of the right hand side keys, the, 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 the top pierced, uh, the top keys. Yeah, so this is what I've got here. With a piano, that if I if I now use the classic stereo pan, you'll hear to the left more bass keys, and to the right more top keys. Yeah, 
and and so obviously moving it to the left or to the right with a classic stereo pan doesn't do the job at all because I would lose some of the like the intensity of some of the keys obviously and th there's no this is not an option I need to use a proper split stereo pan to do that so I'm going to enable that and stick it into context with other uh, musical elements here and I can now shift the whole of my piano to the right hand side of my mix let's say there and you see, I'm not losing the bass keys. I've got the entire stereo signal that has shifted to the right hand side of my mix. Yeah, so it's very important to understand this concept. And, and when facing stereo, fire stereo uh, uh, signals, it's essential to use that type of panning to place, to shift these kind of signals into your mix and place it in relation with the other elements of your tunes.